Sleepers are back. It's been a while. We've been a little busy. Please excuse us. The NCAA tournament was here. We were on Bleacher Report. We should probably address that off the top. We were in the Bleacher Report app out of nowhere. One day we were in our beds. The next day we were in the Bleacher Report app for 12 hours for a marathon live stream on the first day of the NCAA tournament this year, all day Thursday games with John Henson. That was cool. We love John Henson. I think he likes us now. We'll see. Uh, but all in all, super fun experience. Very busy week leading up to that to prepare uh, and then also execute hopefully what was a really fun show for people to watch. So we did not do an episode last week. Here we are trying to corral everything that we have missed. Card, how are you doing, my friend? Your team has advanced to the Sweet 16 since the last time I talked to you. I'm doing I'm doing great. I do want to apologize, though, because I feel like the sleepers actual – not sleepers content in general, but sleepers content on our YouTube channel has been lacking as of lately. But that, but you got to cut us some slack, folks. I mean, we're going to every Big Ten arena. We're going, we're doing twelve hour streams on the Bleacher Report app with John Henson. Like it, we we just had a lot going on, but we don't forget about the channel. Uh, crazy couple of days in the tournament. I mean, we've seen all types of crazy things. Uh, Courtney Ramey, Courtney Ramey. I mean, Princeton making their way to Sweet 16. Everything's just been kind of kind of a little bit nuts. But this is going to be a Big Ten focus as we are a Big Ten kind of more focused uh, podcast. And yeah, w- there's there's teams we got to talk about, not just teams in the tournament, too, by the way. Sorry, Greg. You're also 30 and on your second day of being hungover since your surprise 30th birthday party. Yes. <clears throat> Any and I think I, I, I think I'm I think I might be more hungover today than I was yesterday. In, in the five six years I've known you, I've never heard of a two day hangover for Carter Elliott. Do you want to address the allegations that you are past your prime, a little washed? Uh, no, I think they're 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 very true. I think you can stamp them. They're a thing. I've literally been thirty for less than a week, and I have my and I'm I can't even make it. Okay. Well, you're here. I give you credit for that. That's a good start. Um, happy birthday, big fella. We love you. We appreciate you here at Sleepers Media. And to uh, answer the the question that is the big elephant in the room regarding the Bleacher Report uh, incident event, as you could call it, uh, yes, they did drop the bag. The boys are going up. To quote my good co-host, Carter Elliott, uh, we're not poor is what you said when we got the blue check, but it also applies in this bleacher report instance. So uh sleeper. It's, 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 it's a bad year to be a sleepers hater. You can be that guy. Just know you're might be in the minority and you might be more poor than us. Should we, should we quickly pray on a couple people's downfalls? <laughs> I feel like it might be. <laughs> should, I mean, should, could we have a quick <laughs> prayer circle to be on a couple people's downfalls? This guy, I mean, you took a nice little victory lap at Jalen Wilson's expense. You want to comment on that? Yeah, that's all in good fun though. I just want to let that be known. I mean, Jalen Wilson did call us clowns. Yeah, he called us. He called us clowns, and I said, "You're at home." I mean, I guess I'm, I guess I'm at home too, but I don't know. It's just all in good fun. I mean, how long, he, how long he, did he, you have he, that tweet saved? Oh, for a while. I got a couple other Kansas fans in there too because y'all y'all sounded real goofballish going home in the first weekend, crying about not being the number one overall seed, getting packed up by first year coach Rodney Terry in the Big Twelve championship game, and then getting packed up second weekend and getting by Eric Musselman and he's on the table like D way with his shirt off. Like he did that in front of your face, in front of your team to your program to send you guys home. But well, it doesn't matter though. 29 straight, 30 straight big 12 regular season titles. Sick. You won it last year. Ain't no back to back this way. You guys were hella mean to us to start the year. You deserve this. I mean, no bill self also, that should just be thrown out there, but um yeah yeah uh nice victory lap it was good to see a victory lap for you there i took loud victory laps several at purdue fans expense we will do a purdue video shortly but cart we are here in this video to talk about uh my michigan wolverines who made the sweet 16 of the nit (laughs) who Uh, made the sweet 16 of the nit (laughs) yeah just asterisk there you know subtext nobody's really looking at that i'm sure the footnotes uh yeah it's gonna be an interesting off season for Michigan. Do you want to go first or do you want me to sort of give my state of the union for the Wolverines? You can give your state of the union. All I want to say is that was that not like the most fitting end to the year for like what has happened with Michigan hoops this year? Like that is like have a lead pretty much wrapped up the game and then just collapse. Yeah. 
it was a merciful finish, but also it was like a it was a mercy kill beheading though. Like it was like, oh, let's go put someone down and then let's just chop let's, off. Let's the stop. Head. Let's stop stone. Let's stop stoning him. Let's just go ahead and throw him on the guillotine and end this. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. Uh, but it, bad in like, a, oh, that's cute. They did it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I I'm unhappy clearly, but I'm not broken anymore. You saw me weeks ago when I still had hope for this team, and I was mm. just like absolutely in shambles, broken in uh, West Lafayette when they lost that Indiana game, but. No, I think I'm just ready for what's next. I mean, no way around it. This was a train wreck of a season for Michigan. Jawan Howard needs to face a lot of questions right now. The bright lights should be right in his face. The biggest questions people should be asking of Jawan Howard are not like, can he coach in game? They're all, can he build a roster in college? Can he manage a rotation the way that needs to be managed? But even with this year's team car, I don't think the rotations mattered that much as much as I like to make Jace Howard jokes. Like this is the most glaringly obvious to me cart that this team was horrible was you finally saw a game without both Jed Howard and Kobe Bufkin, right? Like those, Mm -hmm. those two are finally out. Let's see what Michigan has. They're shooting guards, Terrence Williams. If you're without those guys, like, they have no guards on this team. Yo-Yo hey, Kai yeah. started. Yo-Yo, yo, Yo-Yo hit a three. He hit a three, and then he, he does nothing else. Like, Yo-Yo's constantly in the wrong spot defensively, and he's a 19-year-old, uh, wherever he's from, kid. I'm Lebanese. Right now. Lebanese kid. So, I just, uh, it's, they need an overhaul, right? And we've seen in this era in college basketball, there's a lot of different ways to overhaul a roster. Isaiah Barnes has already hit the transfer portal. Isaiah, thank you for your service. Love the Instagram dunks. You'll be great in whatever smaller conference you choose next. Um, They need three more guys to hit the portal, in my opinion. I don't know if they're going to get that right now. They might just lose Kobe and Jet to the NBA and have three open scholarships, and they have three to work with in the portal. I think this roster needs like six new faces on it next year, Cart. Because I think if you try to run this back with like Will Shetter in the rotation and <laughs> Joey Baker back, like they're saying they're trying to apply for a waiver and they want Joey Baker back, like Jalen Llewellyn might be back. Like that's they're, they're dangerously close to just like making the same mistakes with the same bad roster again that they had this past season, just without Kobe Bufkin. So I'm pretty scared. I'm not confident that Juwan Howard will be able to do what he needs to do in the portal, but like, he kind of needs to go the Illinois route, right? Like he needs to yeah. hunt and maybe you need to find guys that fit a little better, but like he needs two starters from the portal, high major starters, not guys that we think are good from Princeton. So, and by the uh, way, uh, Jalen Llewellyn, I mean, he, he really was the face of Princeton basketball last year. He leaves the program there in the sweet 16. Dope. Yeah, that yeah, that's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of turnover, uh, attrition, whatever word you want to use with this Michigan team. And the one thing is, is like it's it's not just Jawan. And I guess I feel bad giving Jawan an excuse because he doesn't have an excuse, but like he can't truly go out and get who he wants, can he? Like he doesn't just have like an incredulous bag that he can go out and get players. He, he has admissions in pushing back on him like i know we joke about it but that's like a real thing no like yeah terrence, like terrence shannon jr wanted to be a michigan wolverine and admission said no so yeah. it's like not only does he have he's he's got like other factors to deal with here now with that said when 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 no one cares make it work like go 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 find a way if you really want to do it you can find a way and so go get players stop playing your sons and see what happens yeah uh, yeah, no, the infrastructure is a real problem. I'll be curious to see if that adjusts at all, because I do think that's adjusted a little bit on the football side of things. Now that they've established that Michigan football is like a college football playoff contender, that's changed a little bit. It's loosened up. I don't know if it will on the basketball side of things as they trend in the opposite direction away from being a final four contender. It's a massive off season. Like you can have, I think you can have a down year and be okay and survive that as a program, depending on what happens immediately the next season. Like John, right. behind- like, like, sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but everyone forgot last year that Xavier was an NIT. Yeah. Like John Beeline was in 
the NIT twice in his Michigan tenure uh, after he really got things rolling. The next year, both of them, he was contending for a Big Ten title or made a tournament run. So, like, he he has an opportunity to do that. I think the first domino is the NBA guys. Like, do you get Jed and Kobe back? They got, they got, they got to be gone though, right? Like, that's why they, that's why Kobe sat out. Um. So, <laughs> I I've been fighting in the forums again, Card. I said no. I would do it. Bro. Wait, you got you got your forum uh information back? I thought. Yeah, I, I, I saw I saw you cancel it. I did cancel it. It was bad for my health. It was toxic for my health because uh, what well, surprise surprise people don't like me over there. People don't like me anywhere on Twitter these days either. But um, yeah, I somehow it's back. I didn't. I, I think it just hasn't expired. I think it dies in like six days. So hopefully, I won't be able to actually log in. But as long as I'm able to log in, like I'm like an addict with that shit. So I'm just refreshing the page. But uh, I I said it's pretty obvious. Like NBA guy is just sitting out. He's opting out of this game the same way pros do in the NFL the same way that we've seen guys do it this year in the NIT. Like they can call it an ankle injury. Kobe Bufkin played the first game in this NIT run. And then we heard nothing about an ankle injury. And then five minutes before tip off, he had an ankle injury and was out. Now that said, he was visibly limping. Do with that what you will. I'm not here to speculate on a kid that's visibly limping, whether or not his injury is real or not. But uh, I got a lot of shit for saying, oh, Kobe's very clearly just headed to the NBA and sitting out. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what you make of this. Uh, I think both are going to be first round picks if they go. So that would seem to point to go. But I don't know. I mean, Jet Jet's dad is the head coach. And Kobe <laughs> Bufkin is probably going to improve his stock if he came back. So nothing yeah. would surprise me. Yeah, I but <laughs> I, I honestly I really don't see a world where he comes back. To be honest with you, I think the main thing is whether Hunter comes back or not. So and that, I and I and I feel like you've gone back and forth on it. Like, for, I, and, I, and I personally have gone back and forth. I think Hunter's back in Michigan next year. I think Hunter's decision will be in part dependent on what the two NBA guys do is where I'm at because I think I think Hunter likes Jet and Kobe in a way he did not like his previous roster despite the fact that the roster kind of stunk with those guys this year I think he just likes them as people um I I think if both of them left I do think Hunter still will test the waters or at least see what's out there even if he ultimately returns to Michigan I just think there's a greater chance that if like all of the talent alongside you is gone. Like that's got to put the the bug in Hunter's ear of like, why would I put myself through this again? With that said, Hunter very does clearly very much does care about his Michigan legacy. Uh, that's, that's a fact to me. I don't think it's really debatable. And he likes Juwan a lot too. Like him and Juwan are boys, boys. He likes Juwan a lot because Juwan lets him do whatever he wants as Juwan lets every player on the team do whatever he wants. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just I think like part of my thing midseason, I know Spiro has a hundred tweets saved in his drafts, ready to pump out of the clip of me saying Hunter's gonna transfer from December. Um part of me saying that was the belief that this team would find a way to make the NCAA tournament. Right. Like I, I thought if this team at least made the tournament, then that would mean Hunter's Michigan legacy was intact enough that he could leave without really tarnishing that. Like, I think Michigan fans would have remembered Hunter as a winner and as a guy who gave everything he had and the, maybe the system, maybe the coach failed him if they had made the NCAA tournament this year. Instead, if Hunter leaves after taking this team to the NIT, he's going to be remembered in a really negative way from this fan base. Right. So I think Hunter knows that, um, but I we'll see. I still think he could get there. I think he could separate that if Kobe and Jed are both gone. And like the the best target in the transfer portal right now is BJ Mack from Wofford. Mm -hmm. And I'd call every blue blood I could if I'm on her. If that's happening right now, it's brutal, man. Yeah, and I I think that for I, maybe this is me sticking up for Hunter, but as much as like people like talk shit about Hunter and like what he wants to do, whether it's for the right reasons or not, he does care about like. I guess you could say legacy. I don't know if it's more so caring about what people think about him, but whatever you want to, whatever word you want to use. And the fact of the matter is that if he could have left like 
where people are like Hunter Dickinson hits the shot against Wisconsin that actually propels them to getting into the tournament and whatever happens from there, then you're probably right. But the fact of the matter is that he did that and then proceeded to lose to a Rutgers team in the Big Ten tournament that then proceeded to lose in the first round of the NIT at home to Hofstra. And then you go out and you lose in the Sweet 16 or second round of the NIT. And again, you blew a nine. You basically have a 9 0 run to lose that game. Like that's a sad way to go out. So I, I don't know if I, I feel like I would even say like 100%, like he's going to be back in Michigan. I don't even think it depends on what others do. I literally exactly. think he's he's gonna write the ship or not write the ship necessarily, but he wants to write himself in his image within like the 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 eyes of the fan base or something like that. He was more visibly dejected than I've ever seen Hunter after a game. I watched the post game press conference after that night he lost to Vanderbilt, and uh, only time in Hunter's career I've seen him give one word answers, and it was it was a two minute press conference. It was like Hunter, I mean, can you summarize how the season went? And he was just like disappointing like he's just broken uh and also for good reason because i i gave hunter credit before the game i said this but like hunter didn't have to play in this nit run at all hunter could have magically had an ankle injury as well he didn't like he's watching kobe and jet get hurt and or opt out and hunter's out there busting vanderbilt's ass the entire game just to i mean he missed one layup and then terrence williams threw the ball away three times in a row so um very tough, very tough, but I think there's a chance you're right. I do. I will say if you are right, I think Hunter Hunter would play a role. If Hunter decides he's back before Kobe and Jet make their decisions, Hunter would play a role in potentially getting those guys back. Hunter was the biggest recruiter for Michigan in the Terrence Shannon thing, and obviously it didn't work out with admissions, but like Hunter, Hunter landed Terrence Shannon with Jawan for Michigan. So I think if Hunter's like, hey, I'm I'm coming back. Hey, Kobe, like you'll be a lottery pick if you come back. We have shit to do. I don't know. There's a chance that this team could get some guys back. So we'll see. What's your, uh, I guess, final prediction, and then we'll move on to another video. What's your prediction for what Michigan's roster looks like next year? Like give me the starting five guys, and you can just throw in hypothetical transfer as a guy. Um, and then – like, do you think their season is successful? Like, do you think they make the tournament next year? Do you think they're still an NIT team? Give me your way too far away prediction. Well, I think you can pencil in two starters for next year. Uh, Doug and Cheddar. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Like, the dude loves, Juwan loves Cheddar. He does. Yeah. He's going to start him if he's there. He, I disagree with that. You don't think so? Cheddar did not start in the NIT game for the record and did okay. not play, did not play a minute in the second half. Okay. Sorry. I wasn't as locked into that game. Um, I'm sure you had other things to pay attention to. Well, there was real tournament games on. So I was uh, watching, yeah. I was watching my firm. I was watching my firm and ticket lose. Cause they laid an egg to those bum ass Aztecs. But uh, let's see here. Uh, Doug Jalen. I think Llewellyn will start. Wing transfer, I don't know who it's going to be. Let me throw out somebody. What about RJ Melendez? Someone like that. Just say transfer. Say hypothetical transfer. Okay, hypothetical transfer. Hypothetical transfer at power forward two. And then Dickinson. Okay. And that, so if that's the team, depending on how good the hypothetical transfers are, we don't know if they're in the tournament or out of it, right? I still think Jalen Llewellyn's good. <laughs> okay we'll have a lot uh, of time this offseason to talk about that i'm sure okay i'll 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 die on that island if i need to but i think that Jalen Wallen's is good i can't wait to send you highlights from his six games in a michigan uniform this year healthy because nothing nothing more exciting than a dude who was killing it for six games against jackson state or whoever the hell he was playing hey sometimes sometimes transfers have a hard time and they come back in that second year and they play extremely well that's a thing do guys usually get better after they tear their ACL? I can't remember. Sometimes. So, modern, yeah. med modern medicine's amazing. Yeah, I'm sure. All right. Uh, <laughs> going to be a great off-season cart. Thanks for this. Uh, go green. Go blue. I don't know anymore. I quit.